have negative 9 amps outside and I made 26 kilowatt hours and I have used 30. This is not going to work. Guys, welcome to this rainy weather here in not so sunny Australia. And of course, welcome back to the off-grid garage. So, there is the battery shelf. And as I told you in the last couple of videos, I'm a bit sick of waiting for Chinese companies to get the software right, to get the BMS right, to get the solution right. So a battery and BMS can actually talk correctly to an inverter or to the Victron system. And as you know, I have tested several BMSs in the last, uh, well, one and a half years. Zeplos, the Pace, the Tabaluga, the Tuku, whatever it's called. The brand new version 3 of the Zeplos BMSs and recently the brand new JK Inverter BMS. Yeah, and they can all communicate to your inverter. And why is this important? Well, if the battery gets too hot, for example, it can turn off your charging. If we are pulling too much current, we can tell the inverter to use more power from the grid and less power from the battery. So it makes actually sense that the BMS and the battery tells the inverter, which is your charger, what it actually needs. And as you also know, I have my battery shelf here set up without any communication to the Victron system. So neither the MPPT solar charge controllers nor the inverters or the Victron system itself knows anything about the batteries apart from the voltage and the current the smart shunt measures and submits to the Victron system. Apart from that, there's no further communication. The MPPTs don't know when to slow down, when the battery gets too hot, when the current gets too high, when the voltage gets too low, when one cell is peaking and one BMS actually turns off, they, um, they don't know anything about it. And I must say, since we installed this battery shelf here, everything is working beautifully fine, no issues at all. So obviously these systems work without communication perfectly fine, but it is not optimal. As I just gave you these examples, if there's no communication, it is hard for your charger to decide what is going on with your battery. Can I keep charging? Is it too much? Is it too little? Can I push more? Are you too hot? Are you too cold? And this is the reason why I'm testing all these inverter BMSs now for, well, one and a half years now, to find out how they communicate with your inverter and the Victron system and what the features and limits are. And you know, we have found a lot of both features and limits. And so far, none of the inverters, Seplos version 1, 2, 3, the Pace BMS, different versions, the Tabaluga BMS, and not even the good old JK BMS here, they are all not running optimal. The charging logic and algorithm is not perfect. It is not great. And everyone who is using these inverter BMSs, these industrial style BMSs, which can connect to your inverter, knows that we are living with frustration, limitations, and suboptimal charge logics and algorithms. We are still hunting for the perfect BMS. And I think I have found something which is very close to that, if it is not the perfect solution out there at the moment. And today, no, I'm not going to tell you what it is right now, but today we want to prepare for that because in the next video I want to tell you and I want to show you what it is, what I found, what I have tested already, and I think it is mind-blowing. And I want to upgrade my whole battery shelf with this new system here. And because it involves communication, we need to upgrade the Raspberry Pi in the battery shelf with a CAN head. This is... where is it? Here it is. Here. This is a small add-on board which connects to your Raspberry Pi and it provides you communication via the CAN bus. And this is what all these BMSs use. They use CAN bus to communicate with your inverter or the Victron system. But the Raspberry Pi by default has no CAN communication to the outside world. If you have an inverter, it most likely has a CAN port already. If you use the Victron system and a servo, the good old Zerbo GX, this one has CAN communication up there. You don't need to watch this video here because you don't need to do this step. You don't need to prepare anything for this solution I'm going to show you in the next video. So maybe skip this video here and watch a show on your favorite Disney Plus channel. Or of course you can stick around and learn something.
All right, I think uh, let's get started. Let's get our fingers dirty. I haven't opened this one here for quite a while. I'm not sure how it looks like inside. I hope everything is fine. I hope there's no snake or something inside now. <laughs> Did I scare you? Now everything looks beautiful. There's not one piece of dust, nothing. Perfect. Man, it's been a while we've been in here, right? Yeah, as you can see, this is a bit of a rat's nest here with all the cables, but this will all go away. And we are going to use these four port adapters here to connect to our Venus OS system. So here's our Raspberry Pi. It is running fine. Never missed a beat so far. So for the installation of the can head. So we need to shut down the whole system. Uh, actually, I don't think it matters. It will just keep charging or uh, in this case, uh, discharging. Not enough sun. So before we go ahead, we have a quick look at the Venus OS system and we go to the settings and all the way down to, to uh, services. Click on here. Yeah, and under services, there is no CAN communication for the Raspberry Pi for the Venus OS here because the Raspberry doesn't have any CAN ports, no CAN hardware yet. Okay, we go back to settings, all the way up to general. Go to the shutdown feature. Ah, by the way, if you don't have the shutdown button in your Venus OS system, I made a video about it months ago. I'll link it down below. It's very easy to implement and then you can clean shut down your system. All right, we click on shutdown here. Shutting down. And now we should see the lights flashing. Yeah, the lights of the Raspberry Pi will not turn off even you shut it down because it is still connected to power. So you have to wait a couple of seconds, maybe 10, 12 seconds, and then you can disconnect the power. So give the Raspberry a bit of time to actually shut down. There we go. And now you have to unplug all the USBs and that's it. And then it is only connected with Velcro. Oh, look at this. My one has come off here. Oh, that is quite a sticky shit here. Uh, because the raspberry gets hot. It melts the glue of the Velcro. Ah, there it is. Ah. ah. There is the CPU cooler again. It came off. Well, luckily it didn't make a short. Yeah, it is not very sticky on this hot CPU. Are there any better solutions out there to mount a heatsink on a CPU like the Raspberry Pi? Or is this just because it is cheap Chinese glue? Well, anyway, I have to butcher this case here a bit because I'm not sure if we can still close the lid once this um, can head is installed here. Seems to be... Maybe I just have to print my own case then, which accommodates the can head as well. And the can head just piggybacks on the pins of your Raspberry Pi. So line them up. Ha! Huh. It doesn't go all the way in because of this cooler. Damn it. What a shame, I have to take off the cooler which actually sticks. But I really want to push in this um, can head all the way. There we go. Problem solved. Yeah, this one puts a tiny bit of pressure onto the CPU cooler and it shouldn't come off anymore. This one doesn't get too hot anyway, so I'm not too fussed about it. Okay, this was the installation of the um, RS485 and CAN head. We are only using the CAN functionality here. So before we put the Pi back into its case, we have to have a look at the CAN head again. And um, see this crystal there at the end, this silver little thingy there. This has a number printer. I'm not sure if you can read this actually. It has a number 12,000. So we need to remember this because we need to change this in the configuration depending what kind of can head you have. 
I've seen these um, crystals here with 8,000, 12,000 and 16,000. And depending what you have, you need to put this in the configuration. And with this WaveShare RS485 CAN hat, you can see here your terminals. We've got an H and L, this is for CAN communication. And we've got a B and A, this is for RS485 communication. So you can either use these screw terminals here, and you can use, or you can use these pins on the other side and make your own connection. Now this is not going to work here. There we go. Okay, I had to snap off this piece of plastic here, otherwise the can head doesn't fit. Yeah, and this is not going to work anymore because of all these pins here. I had to take the whole corner of this case off here. There we go. Because we need this access here for our cables. Oh jeez, this thing is so sticky here. Disgusting. There you go, can head installation complete. So and now I just have to reconnect all the USB cables and the ethernet port here and fire up the device. And hopefully everything works again. Let's find out. Well, we've got a light. And we also have a red light on the can head. That means it gets power. It's a good start. Ooh, for a second I thought it's not coming back. You never know what's going to happen when you add hardware. Okay, let's go back into settings. And all the way down to services. And there are still no can head visible because we have to put some lines, some script into the Raspberry Pi first so it can recognize the additional hardware. Damn it! I don't know the root password for my Raspi. General super user set root password. Okay, password changed. Ha, I'm in. So here I'm using PuTTY to connect to the console of the Raspberry Pi. There are several other solutions out there. This is just what I'm using. If you don't have PuTTY, I link it down below. It's a free download. And you type in the IP address of your Raspberry Pi and log in as root with the password you have set in general under root password. And then we have to add just a few commands into the config.txt file in your boot folder of the Raspberry Pi. So we want to open our config.txt first with a nano editor and then we want to scroll down until we find the until we find the all section. So the first parameter we need may be already in there like in mine. And then we do a shift right click and this should have copied yeah the whole line in here. So the only thing you need to modify is here this number, this 100, now this 16 million or whatever, this needs to be the same number as on your crystal on your can head. So my one has the 12,000 printed on there, so I'm changing the 16 here to a 12. So whatever you have on your crystal needs to be put in here, and this is the only thing you need to modify. So make sure you've got these two lines in your all section. We do a control X, say yes, and save the config txt and the only thing we need to do now is a reboot our raspberry pi is rebooting now and hopefully it should recognize the can head now after it comes back ok 
Okay, reconnect. Let's see. Yep, here it is. It is? Yep, there it is. Okay, nice. So we go into settings again and all the way down to services. Relay. Oh, here it is. So we can now see the CAN0 port installed on the Raspberry Pi. We, we go into it. We need to change the uh, communication speed from 250 to CAN bus BMS 500. Yeah, that's very important. Otherwise, it won't work. Most BMSs use the 500 kilobit per second. And then once you go into network status, you will get errors here because nothing is connected at the moment. But um, shall we connect something? Man, why not? Let's give it a test. So I've now connected the Raspberry Pi with the um, Jekipper 100 ampere hour battery. So it's a Pace BMS. And according to your BMS, you have to make your own cable. So you really have to figure out what pin on your RJ45 connector goes to what cable and then connects to the CAN head. So not all BMSs are the same. The Victron system, for example, has pin 8 of your RJ45 connector on CAN low and pin 7 on CAN high. So you can see uh, CAN, CAN low, CAN low and CAN high. And I have to connect these two accordingly to what BMS I'm using. The good thing is, if you mix them up, it just doesn't work, but it doesn't destroy anything. And most likely, with a CAN communication, you don't need a ground. Only these two cables, CAN, low and high. That should work. Okay, my friends, we have now successfully added a CAN port to our Raspberry Pi running the Venus OS. So we are well prepared for the, for the, big, for the big upgrade for our battery shelf, which is coming in the next video. Yes, this is in the next video already. Are you excited? Well, I am. It is probably the biggest and most important update to the battery shelf. And of course, I will link the WaveShare CAN head for the Raspberry Pi down in the video description, as well as the code you need to put in the config.txt file of your Raspberry Pi with all the links, all the information to install a CAN head on your Raspberry Pi. Very easy to do, takes you maybe a few minutes. Yeah, the case looks a bit butchered now. It's not nice. Maybe there's a 3D template out there already where the Raspberry Pi got a can hat and someone made a nice little case which I can 3D print. But for now, it stays like this. It's good enough. It gets even more ventilation now. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support here. Thanks for all your donations, for your comments, for your likes and sharing my videos. And, un and until the next video, guys, you and safe and thanks again for watching see you then bye bye